Well, let us begin with the Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead. For he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our second reading for this morning is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, 
when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the common culmination of our uh, readings today is summed up in Mary's words. I have seen the Lord. Many years ago, many of us were involved in a uh, renewal movement uh, within the church called uh, Curseal also known uh, by the name Via de Cristo, the way of Christ. It's a lay uh, renewal movement within the church, originating in Spain in the Roman Catholic Church, uh, but embraced by uh, many churches, including the Lutheran Church. And one of the songs that we learned and sang was a song called, Have You Seen Jesus, My Lord? Reflective of Mary's words in our text. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes. He'll show it to you. Have you ever stood in the family with the Lord there in your midst? Seen the face of Christ in each other? Then I say, you've seen Jesus my Lord. The truth of that song and the truth of the resurrection story is that it is a God thing. It is God-empowered. Faith in the resurrection is indeed gift. It is not a matter of collecting all the facts and data, but it comes through God's action in an encounter with the living Christ. For all of us who have struggled with faith, Often that encounter has come in the midst of the community of God's people, but not always. It happens in the power of the word, in the hearing of the spoken word of the gospel, and in the power of the Holy Spirit acting upon us, in the voice and touch of the living Christ to create faith. Not our doing, but gift of God. And that's Mary Magdalene's story. Mary comes early that morning knowing that death is real. She had stood at the cross with Jesus' mother. She knew that Jesus had died and had been placed in this tomb. She comes while it is still dark on that first day of the week, and the first thing she sees is that the stone has been moved away from the entrance of the tomb. She runs to Simon Peter and the other disciples. She says, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Simon Peter and the beloved disciple come and go, but Mary lingers. And still all she knows is that the tomb is empty, the body is gone, she still thinks it must be a matter of a body-snatching event. She stands weeping. She bends to look into the tomb only to find two angels, one at the head and one at the foot where Jesus' body had been laid. And then they ask her why she is weeping. And we know in this moment that Mary still thinks that the body has been taken. She says, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. She says, I don't see Jesus. She's looking, but on her own, she does not see Jesus. 
And then comes the miracle. She turns around. She sees Jesus. She doesn't recognize him. Still weeping, Jesus says to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And then strangely, supposing him to be the gardener, she says, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Death is still the reality for Mary. And then Jesus speaks her name, Mary. She turns and says to him, Teacher. In that moment, the voice of the risen Christ broke through and opened eyes. In a place of death, Mary sees life. In a garden where life began long ago in creation, so now in another garden, there blossoms a new creation. And soon she announces to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. As your pastor, I cannot create faith for you. I cannot open your eyes to see the resurrection. Even as pastor, I cannot create faith for myself. The best I can do, the best we can do together, is to place ourselves in the hearing of God's word, in the witness of the gospel word, in the living word, Jesus Christ. And to trust the power of the Holy Spirit to open our eyes and hearts to the deeper reality, the presence of the living Christ in our midst. And often for many of us, those moments happen when life is really hard. When the reality of death and brokenness and hurt and heartache and failure are all around us like it was for Mary Magdalene. And somehow in that moment, the risen Christ speaks our name. And we know his abiding presence with us and hope is born. As I end my ministry here at Lord of Life, I think it was either my first or second message to you where I shared the story of my grandmother's funeral. A gentle soul in my life. We had gathered in a small wooden frame church for her funeral. The same church in which I had been baptized the white altar with gold gilding and ornamentation stood at the front. Torvalson's statue of Christ with outstretched arms, come unto me. And high on the top was a cross crowning the pinnacle. It was a warm day at the end of May. And the arched windows had been pulled down from the top to allow for ventilation. And just as the service was to begin, a common sparrow flew into the window and was flitting around the front. Flitting and fluttering around the altar, and I found myself agitated that this was a distraction to this solemn occasion honoring someone so very dear to me. And then just before the service began, the sparrow found that perch right under the cross at the very top of the altar. And there the sparrow sat throughout the service. Even as we sang those so familiar words from the hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father, Nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge Air was given. 
And then as the last words of the benediction were spoken, that sparrow took flight and flew straight out the window and was gone. Coincidence. But in that moment, all my anxiety for the loss of my grandmother was carried forward on the wings of faith. To me, it spoke of how God had taken her to himself in the witness of one of God's sparrows. As Jesus says, not one of whom will fall to the ground unperceived by our Father in heaven. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look. Open your eyes. He'll show it to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Grant to us the vision and the witness of Mary Magdalene. Yes, we have seen the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Pete will lead us in our prayers. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Each petition ends with the words, Merciful God, and you're invited to respond, receive our prayer. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all baptized the same excitement as the woman at the tomb, and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with plentiful harvest. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Sheltering God. Strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Encouraging God. You do new things among us. You pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety who suffer in any way. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Significant change upon the Lord of life as we move toward changes in staff and pastoral leadership. Give us this community of faith, a sense of joy and wonder as new opportunities present themselves. Exploring new avenues of faith, formation, worship, and discipline in a time of transition. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witness who now rests in you. Merciful God receive our prayer. Merciful God, we pre present before you all who have are all who listed in your prayer concerns and celebrations. And now in this moment of silence, we name before you those whom you have specifically placed upon our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray your blessing to be with Jackie and family as they mourn the death of, of Dick's brother, Kenny. And Lord, uh, give them assurance of your presence and peace. Lord, we uh, pray that you surround Lois with your loving arms as she has entered into this time of life of diminished uh, mental capabilities. And so, Lord... Uh, Speak to her heart that she may always know that she still is bound up in your love and your mercy. 
Lord, for all these things and for whatever else that you see that we have need of, for the ways that we continue to receive blessings from you, we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's stand and greet one another with that Easter greeting of peace. You may be seated as we continue with Holy Communion. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.